A continuación presentamos el devocional diario por el pastor José Manuel Sierra y traducido al inglés. En español se emite de lunes a viernes a las 9 horas en las Islas Canarias y queda grabado en nuestros canales de Facebook y YouTube. Debajo en la descripción de este vídeo encontrará el enlace para los devocionales en español. Good morning and welcome to everyone to today's devotional. I hope that you have spent a blessed weekend where the Lord has brought had brought word into your life and you have started this week with the blessing of God, which is the most important thing that we can hope to have. We're going to be going to a letter written by one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, specifically Peter. That impulsive man, that man that saw the glory of the Lord during the time that he was traveling from one place to another with the Lord Jesus Christ, and a man that was very used in the first years of the uh, primitive church. He wrote two letters. One is known as First Peter and the other one as Second Peter. In the first letter that he writes, in chapter 1, verse 13, we read the very interesting words. Therefore, guard up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hopefully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the re revelation of Jesus Christ. How did the Apostle Peter knew perfectly well that the Lord Jesus Christ would return to this world again? If only we had the Old Testament, the Tanakh, as the Jewish people call it, we would have more data, more information to conclude that the Messiah would come twice, not only once as a suffering servant, but also a second time as a triumphant and glorious king. But thanks to the Lord that we also have the New Testament. And we can read that the Lord Jesus Christ came, died on a cross, rose again, ascended, and, and sat down at the right hand of God the Father, but it will return again. There is more than 150 texts in the New Testament that talks about the return of Jesus Christ, of the Messiah, for the second time. Well, regardless of the subject of the second coming of Christ, and we have a lot of information thanks to the Lord, Peter is talking about the formation of the character of a person. He talks about being sober. He speaks about maturity. He speaks about growth. In other words, if we are Christians, not only it is important to pray and to have biblical knowledge, but also to let ourselves be molded, to be tested by the hand of our good God, that He will perfect us, that He will remove every day, take out of our lives those dead branches, all of those expressions, words, attitudes, thoughts, etc., that do not glorify Him. Of course, the work is very hard, and it will take us all the all our lives, to be able to overcome certain things of our character, our way of being. But it is possible because the Holy Spirit dwells now in our hearts. We're not alone in this work. He is with us every day, helping us, supporting us, speaking to us through His beautiful and powerful Word, so that every day we will grow and mature and change, and not only giving beautiful words, but also the most important thing of it all is to demonstrate with our lives that Christ has truly begun a work in us that nothing and nobody will be able to stop. If we fall, if we sin and say something wrong, well, the Bible says we have a lawyer with the Father, Jesus Christ the just, and we can ask for forgiveness every time that we need to be forgiven. We can cry out to Him every time that we need help. And the Lord Jesus Christ will always help us, will always restore us, will always lift us up so that we can continue forward. Like those children who make uh, a lot of little beautiful things, but they do 
sometimes they do things that are not quite right. And the parents are for that, to co correct them, to instruct them, and teach them. And little by little, they will learn good manners, good expressions, good behavior, etc. Exactly the same happens with us. We have experienced what the Bible have called the new birth. We have had an experience that has transformed us forever. And we can say and th there is a before and an after in our lives. Before and after we have understood the gospel and having received Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. But that doesn't mean that we do not have to grow and mature and develop as believers and change in many areas of our lives. And that is the work that is going to take us our whole life, to reach that prudence, that maturity, that sobriety, that level that Christ wants to take us to and each one of us. Do not get despair, do not become bitter or depressed, but as we have read, to wait completely in the grace that will be brought when Jesus Christ is manifested. We are in a process of change. The Lord Jesus Christ has not finished his work in each one of us, but we trust and we pray and we work every day with, to attain this with the help and support of God to leave behind all those things that do not glorify and do not honor God. They don't give him a good testimony and that sometimes they can turn against us, preventing us from being that light, preventing us from being the salt of the earth, as the Lord Jesus Christ said that we all had to be. My dear brethren, today we begin a new day. We want to ask together the blessing of God and ask him that he will help us to change, mature, that we will not be like those that the Lord, through the, Paul, through the pen of Paul, said they're babies and carnal Christians. And you need milk, not only solid food, because there are lawsuits and jealousy and envy among you. And I'm referring to the Corinthians. Also, in that precious letter, whose author we do not know who was the Hebrew letter, After so much, having been already teachers, you still have need of milk and not solid food because they had not grown or mature as they expected them to have. That, may that never happen to us. May the time pass and we listen to many sermons and many Bible studies and we attend and we go to many meetings where the Word of God is preached, but there is no such growth. They had not been that developing and that maturing in us. That will be a tragedy. We cannot remain anorexic, spiritually speaking. But every day we have to be more strengthened in God with the clear ideas, with a firm and robust faith that has to be tested at some time by the fire. But we will always come out strengthened and renewed from the afflictions and closer to God than before we experience that trial. So, my dear brethren, we present this day to the Lord, our lives with thanksgiving, asking Him that He will help us to internalize and to put in practice this truth that we have heard this day. Let's pray to our God. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you. From the depth of our hearts, we are giving you today, because we know that the work that you have started in us Nothing and no one will be able to destroy or stop. But that you are going to perfect it and you're going to help us to grow, to mature, to reach those levels that you want us to reach. Lord, help us to change in all aspects and areas of our lives in which we need to do so. Help us to improve our way of thinking, our way of speaking, our way to behave, And we put our lives in your hands, and with faith, we give you thanks because we know that you will help us to be able to grow and know you better and to serve you better. We put our lives in your hands, in the blessed name of Jesus, amen and amen. My dear brethren, may the Lord bless us all this new day that just started. I want to give thanks to all the radio stations that are And that speaking with us previously as it should be, they have decided to put our devotionals in their program, in their, their call, our services, the pastor online when I can uh, do it, 
stations in Guatemala, stations in the United States, in Honduras, Ecuador, and speaking with our dear brother from Ecuador, director of Radio Aguila, well, to all of you, thank you with all our hearts for spreading the word of God through the television, through the radio. It has nothing to do with the channels that are fraudulent, that some will continue to raise and open with my name and with the logo of our church, of our ministry. And those Facebook channels and YouTube channels have nothing to do with us. But those TV stations and radio stations that use these materials so that people will convert themselves and will have a personal experience with Christ, we congratulate them and we send them thanks with all our hearts. My dear brethren, may the Lord bless you. Thank you for all who are praying for us every day. Thank you for all those who support this ministry so that we can continue spreading the good news of Christ. And also, my dear brethren, thank you to all who feel that burden in their hearts to spread the word and get ready and instruct themselves to serve better the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Let's continue enjoying our fellowship, our relationship with the Lord. And I send greetings to all of you in these first days of the year, which that without a doubt will be a year of victory and blessing, and that we're going to continue seeing the glory of God like never before or even imagined. May the Lord bless you, my dear brethren. <laughs>